Okay, we're going to take some notes now. Please title your notes, cross sections. This lesson could have been done on day one of this unit, but we wanted to dive into some of the formulas, some stuff you've already done, and then we wanted to give you kind of a break after doing all that math, and that's what today is. Today's kind of a break, and we're going to talk about cross sections, and we're also going to talk about solids of revolution. When we take a 2D figure, we rotate it about an axis, and we get a 3D solid. So what are cross sections? You can write this down. A cross section is when you think about what 2D shape would be formed if I sliced a 3D solid with a piece of paper or a knife or a plane. You know what I mean? So we're talking about a plane intersecting a solid and what two-dimensional shape we get. So our cross section is never going to be a cone. Our cross section is never going to be a sphere. Our cross section is going to be like a rectangle or a triangle or a circle. Make a sphere with your Play-Doh. Alright, next I want you to take the dental floss and I want you to slice through your sphere. I wonder if I can show this. <laughs> so I'm taking my dental floss and I am cutting, I am slicing through my sphere. Dun, da, da, da. If you look on my camera, the one that's moving. So technically this is called a hemisphere, but we're not looking at the solid that results. We are looking at the 2D figure that results. And I know a lot of these are common sense. I know you might know these without actually having to do it, but sometimes when you have an experience with something, it helps you understand it deeper than if you didn't have an experience with it. So, make a conjecture about the cross-section of a sphere. What is the cross-section of a sphere, guys? Okay, I know you could have done that in second grade, but this one is a little bit deeper thinking. Don't say the answer yet. I want you to play with your floss and play with your sphere, and I want you to create all different cross sections. I want you to do one where you don't go through the middle. I want you to go diagonally. I want you to do a small cross section, a large cross section, and I want you to figure out if the cross section of a sphere can be an oval. I sliced and I got two totally unequal parts. These are not hemispheres. But if you notice, that is a pretty perfect shape. When I say perfect, I mean not an oval. <laughs> so what do you think, true or false? The cross section of a sphere can be an oval. That is what is so cool about a sphere. No matter how you cut into a sphere, you are going to get a perfect circle every time. And all of those circles are going to be similar to each other, which is really cool. Well, because also all circles in the world are similar to each other. But really cool. Okay, so you cannot get an oval out of a cross section for a sphere. Now, please, to the best of your ability, make a cylinder with your dough. Okay, so we're going to go basic to start with. Take your floss, and I want you to slice horizontally through the cylinder, a.k.a. I want you to slice parallel to the base. So make a conjecture about the cross-section of a cylinder when the slice is parallel to the base. What is your conclusion that you probably could have concluded without Play-Doh? What do you think? It's kind of like a, a logic statement. If my slice is parallel to the base, then the cross-section of my cylinder is a circle. Okay, now, really important, same question as a sphere. The cross-section of a cylinder can be an oval, true or false. Okay, guys, so what are you getting when you are slicing kind of diagonally through that cylinder? What are you finding? It's kind of hard to do. What kind of shapes are resulting? Did anyone get an oval? I don't know if you can tell. Mine is. I went diagonal. I went diagonal through my Play-Doh. And I definitely did not get a circle. Although it is hard to tell. 
So a lot of you, when you went diagonal through your oval, you should have kind of gotten a shape like that. What is that? It's not a circle, right? You're not going to get a circle if you slice diagonally through your cylinder. What do y'all you, think? What are your conjectures? Maybe a half circle, but it's not perfect. Yeah. If I erase this part of it, what would you call that in math terms? Parabola, Pranav. Very good. Kendra was next. A parabola. You're kind of getting some sort of parabola. Palabra, I can't talk, when you go diagonally. All right, let's move on. We still have a cylinder. Still have a cylinder. And go ahead and slice vertically through your cylinder and show the camera. So let's say a sentence. If I slice a cylinder perpendicular to its base, then my cross section is a rectangle. Yep. Okay, last true or false? True or false? The cross section of a cylinder can be a square. Hmm. The cross section of a cylinder could be a square. Who could tell me the exact situation when the cross section of a cylinder is a square? This is a good one. Very good, Nathan. If you have a cylinder, the cross section, when you go vertical, is made up of the diameter and the height. The diameter and the height. So if, if the diameter equals the height, then my cross section will be a square. That sounds like a really good test question. Okay. All right, in your notes, go ahead and write down what you think the answer is. I am showing a plane intersecting a solid, and I want you to write down what the cross section is. Um, for A, when a plane intersects a cone, if it's parallel to the base, the base is a circle. So the cross section is going to be a circle. For B, this plane is intersecting a probably a square pyramid, but doesn't matter. The intersection is going to be a triangle. Because that's what the lateral faces are of a pyramid, and this one's going laterally. C, ooh, what do we get when we slice a cone vertically? Think of the cone, and think of the front of the cone, and you like flatten the cone. You just take the cone and you push it into the wall. You're going to get the outline. You're going to get a triangle. All right, next one. This one's really easy. Rectangle. We've got, it kind of looks like an isosceles triangle, but some sort of triangle. And then also a triangle. This one looks more equilateral, although we don't really know. But it could be an equilateral triangle if that's what the base is. All right? Okay, um, this is what you will be looking at if you do that exploration that I send you. Um, it's called cross-section flyer. But anyways, it's pretty cool. You take a, a shape and you can move the cross-section all around. You can drag it and you see what different cross-sections you get when you move it around. Isn't that cool? So that's the website I really want you to play with tonight. And I'm going to send you an interactive guide-by-guide -guide step as to how you should play with the website. Okay. Uh, next thing, solids of revolution. Write this down. I know that floss really did work good with that Play-Doh. Solids of revolution. 3D figures can be generated by rotating 2D figures. So we're going to take our sticky notes and we're going to revolve them around a pencil. All right. So if, you, if your sticky note's large, you can cut it in half. If your sticky note's regular size, see mine was like a long, mine was a long sticky note, so I cut mine in half. But if yours is just a regular one, 
Good, and stick that sticky note to your pen or pencil. This one, it works as good as you make it work. But anyways, um, you're going to take that sticky note and you're going to rotate it about your pencil. Here, let me do this. And try to imagine what solid you're creating when you rotate 360 degrees. What solid, can you kind of see the solid sometimes a little bit? <laughs> so what solid is created when a rectangle is rotated about one of its sides? Yep, it should look like, when you look at this really quickly, it should look like a cylinder, kind of. It should be a cylinder. Yep, a cylinder is a solid revolution of a rectangle around one of its sides. All right, now I need you to turn your sticky note into a right triangle. Do that however you want. I'm going to just um, cut the hypotenuse of my rectangle. Cut through the hypotenuse. Now I have a right triangle. And now, ooh, this I think it looks like what it's supposed to. Can you kind of see the 3D figure that I get when I rotate that? What am I getting? You should get a cone when you rotate that sticky note about your pencil. So a cone is a solid revolution of a right triangle around one of its legs. Okay, last one. Take that right triangle, and I know this is hard. I want you to attach the hypotenuse to the pin. I know the hypotenuse doesn't have sticky on it, but mine has a little dot of sticky down here from its leg. So I'm just going to attach it the best I can. I didn't use tape or anything. I just used the one sticky part I had. Now try to picture what solid would I create if I rotated this around an axis. This one I can't go as quickly because it's going to come on. Can you kind of see? What do you get? A pyramid? Hmm. Now notice when we're rotating 360 degrees, a lot of times there's a circle involved, right? There's a circle involved in our shape because of that 360 degree rotation. It's kind of a tricky answer, and it actually doesn't look like this because that's not how my triangle was placed. You actually get a double cone. See what I mean? And it might not even be congruent. The top one might be shorter depending on how your original triangle was. So you that's what you get. You get a cone, but you get like a double cone that shares a base. Can you kind of see that? Is that the, I don't know, even know the name of it, other than double cone. This is the other website that you're going to hopefully have time to explore tonight. This one's pretty cool. Um, let me reset it. Maybe not. Anyways, um, you're going to, you're going to plot a figure, and then you're going to tell it to revolve. And it's going to create a 3D solid, and then you can touch the screen, and you can drag it around. And you can see what that 3D solid looks like from all different angles. So that is also a really dynamic, really cool website. What figure will result when this shape is rotated about the y-axis? So we kind of already did this through exploration. What do you get for A? We didn't try B. What happens when you rotate a semicircle about our axis? What do you get? Sphere. Very good. So do you notice that all of our answers involve a circle? Cone, cylinder, sphere. Hmm. What 2D figure could be rotated about a vertical axis to produce the following solids? Okay, well, we already, we already had an experience with each one of these. So A, we already said, was a semicircle. B, we did this in class. Now, you can't just say triangle for B. That will not work. It has to be a right triangle, and it has to be a right triangle rotated about one of its legs. So if you're asked about B, you have to be really specific about the answer. And then, of course, C could be any old rectangle. Don't even care as long as you rotate it about one of its sides. 
All right, so this is the last thing, the last slide for today, and then you can start on your homework. We need to sort these. We need to figure out what can result when a plane intersects a cylinder. What can result when a plane intersects a cylinder? So what things do you think go in the yes column? A square, yep. A circle, yes. A rectangle, square and rectangle go hand in hand, yeah. If a square can be created almost every time, a rectangle and vice versa. Which one's the how? How can the rectangle form? Oh, we did this one. So here's my cylinder, and I come in this way. The cross section of a cylinder through the top vertically is a rectangle. Did you do it with the Play-Doh? <laughs> All right, what else? Now, this is not really a cross-section question. This is an intersection question. What do you get if my cylinder intersects my plane like this? A line. It's kind of counterintuitive, but you can get a line. What about this? A point! Isn't that crazy? Can you get an oval? If you go diagonally, you can. So is there anything in the no column? Could you get a triangle? Could you get a triangle out of a plane and a cylinder? You can try tonight on that website. The answer is no. All right, you can start on your